design was because we couldn't locate this thing in space. Nobody could locate it in space. But now it's it's got five pins and he's referenced to the five pins. So what I sent out, I had a, a condition on my, the last uh, report that, that the, that someone from the board has to inspect things, the, the pins after they've been installed and he's got to install them, but that's done. So what I've recommended on that one that we approve it subject to fill, subject to uh, submission of the final drawings to Colleen and the trench permit. And that's, that's that was the only one that I, that I had. Uh, okay, and so you, you you were on site for those pins for, that John put in place, so we're all good all the way around on that. I was I was not on site. He submitted pictures that the pins oh, okay. were there, okay. re reference to the the flags that the surveyors put in. So yeah, yeah no worries. What are, Herb? What are your thinking? Of, what's your thinking about this one? So he located the pins under the surveyor's flags, is that correct? Correct. And then he referenced the septic system in the well off of the iron pins. So what are, are we going to approve this one or are we, do we have more that we would like from them? Well, I don't need any more. I, my only comment is it seems like it's been done backwards. Um, the surveying and pins should have been done in the first place, not in the last place. Yeah. And so it's, it is an issue to say, how do you, how do you locate anything in, in real space unless you've got something that's, that's in fact in the ground that you can find? Yeah, uh, unless he must have GPS it or something, but. Well, yeah. it did what happened. Yeah, what, from what he told me is that at the surveyor did have the thing based on the GPS and they're going to have to go back in and set new pins for the the uh the boundaries but these had to be set for the the wetlands and so so that's what he he ended up doing since it's a his feeling it's it's correct that the 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 boundaries aren't the things that were the limit out there it was actually the wetlands are the things that that squeeze everything and so he he referenced to the wet wetland so he wouldn't be violating those rules. And I, from my standpoint, I don't care. As long as someone can go out and put a tape on it and measure to where things are, that's what I need to know. Otherwise, you, you don't know where they are compared to where the perp tests were done. Do you know now? Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah, um, it's my perspective or what little it counts that we should be good on this thing all the way around. We've got another one before anybody comes in. Uh, there's an issue, Herb, and this one is one I'm, I'm not sure you've seen, but there's a, a thing that's a, a new well that was put in on a repair on Bachelor Street. And it's a it's called a flowing artesian well. It means that the the water continually flows out of it. And they did something with it that wasn't to what I think would have been the code, but more than that, they did something I think that's going to end up getting someone sick. And that they they put uh a whole, a second pitless adapter about four feet below the ground 
to drain off the extra water to let it flow by gravity in a one inch pipe. In the one inch pipe, they just put a standard brass check valve that they bought forever in a hardware store and then discharge the pipe about another foot away, about one foot above the water line, the current water line in a brook going underneath the street. And the, the, the code, when you look this up, the code says that you should be running an air gap that the, the standard way of, not his standard way, the guy that's from, from like, what is, what is it, Curran? Lee, whoever the guy is from New Hampshire. They said, oh, we do this all the time. But when you look up there, the, the world says, you're supposed to take that overflow pipe up above the ground, come out of the, the well casing, put a valve, put an elbow, put a screen on the elbow and either discharges it through a gap down to the ground or through a gap that goes into a pipe in the ground and then the water goes away so that there's no way for anything that's happening on the, on the ground to, the, to get into this, into this well. And what he's got is this, this pipe that's connected that the, in the event that this little junky check valve, the check valve isn't spring loaded, and it's just a little thing that says, yeah, it'll, most of the time it stays closed. But uh, my feeling would be that we tell them, you can't do that. You're going to get someone really sick someday from this cross contamination, and you have to put that air gap in there to protect it. We and Herb, what is your thought? Are they recommending a, um, a, a drywall? No, they're, they actually, uh, different states, depending on how much water is coming out of it, different states put plugs and they do all sorts of things. But Massachusetts is really saying what you do with the water once it hits the ground isn't so important. What's really important is to protect the, the well, the well integrity. So that's what that gap does, is it makes it so that that uh, you can't suck stuff up in there. And and in reality, they actually could have put a trough that goes you know, on the ground and, and flows to the brook, or you can put a pipe that goes to the, the brook. The issue is they're worried about is what happens when it's really cold and it, and it freezes on the ground. Yeah, especially with the one-inch line. If it's weak flow, it, of course it will freeze. Yeah, and it, if it, in fact, if it were in uh, Michigan, Michigan requires that that, if you're going to go into that pipe that goes to the brook, the pipe, the receiving pipe has to be at a minimum of twice the, twice the diameter of the pipe coming out of the well <clears throat> to make sure it does flow away. Well, obviously, I haven't heard anything about this uh, until just now. Um, it seems like there is an issue of potential backflow. And if there is backflow, there is uh, the likelihood of contamination. Yeah. But uh, I don't know anything about this system and haven't heard about it until just now. Yeah. I heard about yeah. it at the end of last week. And yeah, this is all new territory. Uh, for, I think for everybody heard. I'm sorry, Lee? This is all new territory, I think, for, for, well, for you and me, for sure, it's new territory. I'm not sure if Dick had run into this in the past, but this is a new one on, on me and you. Yeah. I only know but, new of one other, and that was on, on School Street. And it, the owner owned, it was on a slope and uh, the water was flowing onto his property and he just let it flow onto the surface and down the bank. Maybe the issue is we just tell them instead of telling them how to do it, 
telling him he can't put a system in that that can end up getting that that backflow and cross contamination. In fact, when I talked to the guy, he said he was going to bury the little check valve in the ground. <clears throat> and I asked him, I said, "Do you really think that you this thing's going to work for ten years?" He says, "Well, it could be buried for fifty years." I said, "This is not a you know in the world that." That when you go into buildings that protect public water supply from building contamination, they use double sanitary check valves and they've got, they're maintained and tested every year and, and they've got a gap in between them so you can't suck, suck building water back into the, the town potable water supply. So it's, a, it's not a joke. So Anyways, that's that's what we had with that. So are we supposed to act on this? Well, it's we we need to tell them either that we're fine with it or that he can't do it that way. So I guess you the answer is for we have to do something. We either say we're gonna just let it go or tell them they've got to do something that that protects well, there's, properly. There's potential backflow in this and that could be potentially serious. So that doesn't sound like the right thing to do to me. I agree with you. Lee, what is your thought? Well, yeah, I'm on, the wall company, of course, has uh, the experience in this type of environment but also you know we're charged with keeping everybody safe from themselves so the well company should be i would think supplying us some type of data or alternative solution rather than a bunch of uh off the shelf uh hardware one inch check valves and plastic pipe to make this thing go away it doesn't sound like a good idea I'm will, guessing this is Cushing's and Sons. Yeah, that's who it is. Yeah, that's Marvin. Yeah, Marvin. They must, have some, they must have done this in the past someplace else to a higher standard than this, I would think, I would hope. Yeah, I I would hope. But he, Marvin, I talked to Marvin. And uh, he called me Saturday. And I said, you know, this doesn't seem well thought out. And and actually, when he, I told him, do you really think that little brass thing buried in the ground is going to work for 10 years? He said, it may have to work for 50 years. And I said, do you really think it's going to? And he had some doubts about whether that would, in fact, work. Well, I move that we disapprove uh, this and ask Mr. Cushing uh, to come and talk to us if he's got data that this works and is an appropriate way to do this, then let him convince us of it. Otherwise, it seems to me that this is dangerous and has potential for backflow, which is not okay. I can support that stance. Lee, can you? Sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, our, uh, let's see, we are almost at, at uh, 7.15, I had, I don't see John, oh yes, John, you're there and you're, you're muted, but. Yeah, how's that, Richard? Okay. <laughs> I think, I think we decided that the pins gave us the, the, uh, reference the permanent reference we need to to make sure that the installer can measure to the well and measure to the septic system uh my recommendation was that we grant approve it subject to granby's regulations on fill a submission of final drawings to colleen and that the trench permit be taken out before it gets installed. Lee and, and Herb, is that is that where we 
agreed or is that our stand? Yes, yes, I agree with that. Okay, John, that's that's where we are. And you can get us to do. Thank you so much. I'll get a set of drawings in the mail to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. You too. You too. Bye-bye. Now, I did see that we had Daniel Strum was with us, but I don't see him right now. So I guess we'll, we can move. I, I do see that Crystal Bernier is here. We could do if she in fact is here for something special, we could, we could deal with that. Yes, we're here. Okay, um, you've submitted, what I've seen so far is the approval from Lynn, from the, the health standpoint. Uh, Colleen sent a note out saying that, that you were, that the, I think the building inspector and the fire department were going to be into your, into your business and give their okay. Did that, yes. Did yep, that and they both, yes, they've both been here and they've both gotten their okay. Have you sent anything to Colleen or have they sent anything? I haven't seen anything. I see yep. the, the, the fire chief happens to be with us right now and he may or may not know that I'm not sure how intimately he was involved with that inspection. I can be honest, I am not familiar with the inspection. Okay, that's, a, that's fair and uh, reasonable. Uh, could we, Herb and, and Lee, are we in a spot that we'd approve op the opening if, if Colleen, was in receipt of, of, of those two reports saying it's okay? It's okay by me. Sure, that sounds reasonable. So, something Thanks. special, if you can get that to Colleen, we are authorizing her to sign that for us. Great, thank you, we appreciate that a lot. Thank you guys for your time tonight. Okay, and good luck. Thank you very much. So, you know, before I forget, uh, meeting minutes for April 13th, Herb, you made comments and I put some on top of yours. Um, Lee, I don't know if you've had a chance to read them, but are, are we okay with those, with those minutes? From what I read, everything, uh, I saw the correction, I should be a-okay. Yes. Okay. Colleen, we're good with that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Dennis is here yet. I don't see him. Um, and it certainly... It looks like Daniel Strum, who's not quite on yet. So I'll go, I've got Colleen's timesheet. Um, are we, it's a normal 70 hour timesheet. Are Herb and Lee, are we okay with that? Yes. Yes, thank you. And I, I am too. Colleen, we're, we're okay. set with that. Okay, next, thank you. The next one is the payments to the treasurer totals $1,125, 405 board of health permits, 120 for <clears throat> licenses, 600 for, key, uh, for park test fees, and that's it for 1125. Herb and Lee, are you okay with that? It adds yes. up. Lee? Yes, thank you. 
and I am too. So Colleen, we're, that's approved. Okay. The, ne the next one that I have is a purchasing request and that's for a headset for Colleen, uh, envelopes, a three hole punch and a wire vertical file for 9178. Um, our, are we okay with that? Have you had a yes. chance to try that headset, uh, Colleen? Have you had any uh, experience with it? No, no. I just thought it'd be a little better than the speaker since the office is open and, you know, yeah. I have little earbuds, but those, the cord's not long enough and they're too tiny. <laughs> well, this, this headset is so inexpensive anyway, if it doesn't work out, it worked out. Yeah. That's the only thing that bothers okay. me, that it, it may not be uh, able to do what you want it to do, but check it out. Yeah. Okay. I guess I support her that it's, it's, it's cheap enough to try, but it's, yeah. I'm also concerned that it's so cheap that it's exactly yeah. what Herb just said. Yeah. I could support trying it though. How about you, Lee? Sure. Okay, then that's yeah, we, a we Okay. Okay. So that's approved also, Colleen. Okay. Uh, I am still looking. We do not yet have Daniel Strong. And uh, and that's, we're at his license. We've got something special done. Uh, union Mark Renewal. And we've got uh, how many different ones there we have retail foods, milk and cream, tobacco, yeah. and I guess yeah. those, that's the three. The yeah. renewal, yeah. Are, are we okay with that? I'm okay yeah. with it. Uh, I just, I, yes, I'm okay with it. Lee? Should be fine, thank you. And I am too, Colleen, so you can approve okay. that. Um, we've got another one that's certificate of compliance for the what the three the three D boxes on. 131, 135, 137 South Street. Lee, that's yours. I, were, were they done? Yeah, they were put in properly and they all contain the uh, speed level orders. And in conversation with Lori, um, according to her, uh, they did in fact note well separation on the front of the property on their report. Yeah, I saw that. They said it was over 100 feet, and that's what the code says. Right. <clears throat> Is so, there, there, any way, is there any way to get people to have more formal drawings than these uh, little sketches that they send in, which... Uh, uh, I, I, I just uh, have a problem with them. Maybe more formally drawn, or is that good enough? If it's good enough, I guess it's good enough. Uh, it, it just, it looks cheesy to me. And that's, my, my recollection is that every, Virtually every one of these Title V inspections come through with this kind of handwritten. Yeah. It, 
probably complies with the with the regulations. It gives a they all give a, a location of the whatever the the tank openings and the the D box, but I I guess okay. I guess what happens is when you look at this particular license, it's not a very it's not the same kind of license as the guys that are designing. This is this is certainly a a septic tank pumper could get one of these licenses. Yeah. Okay. So I'm so just I'm just making a complaint. That's yeah. all. So Colleen, we we let you sign the certificate of compliance. We do have right now Daniel. Daniel Strem, you are here to see us. Yes, I am. So can you can you hear me? I can. Okay. And I trust I trust if I can, Herb and Lee and, and Colleen can too. Okay, we should be good. So this is a a meeting that we always have with with new installers. And okay. The purpose of it is to to make sure that <clears throat> we feel good about your capabilities and you know us a little bit. Sure. So the, the first thing that I ask, and, that, and you've supplied us with a couple places that you're already, you've got licenses doing. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch. How long have you been doing this? Oh, I've been doing... Oh, probably 20 years. Oh, I mean, why? Excuse me? Why? Why do I do it? Uh, no, no. I said quite a while. Oh, yes. Well, what we do is I don't do them on a regular basis. I usually do. I'm a builder. So we build houses, new construction, rehabs. So we always do all our own, you know, houses. So I only do five to ten a year. And, you know, so like this is a house I'm building. So I'll put this install, you know, I'll install this system for this house. And I do, you know, I pick them up here and there with these engineers. Yeah. You know, what kind of what kind of equipment, you know, the heavy kind of equipment do you do you have? The you know, trucks, backhoes kind of things. Yeah, I have ten I have ex yeah, I've got three or four excavators. I've got a bunch of track machines. I've got ten wheelers. So we do all our own site work. That's oh, one do. of our big things. Yep, we do all. What do you our own use? Cuts. What do you use to shoot levels? Oh, I use a transit. Okay. Yeah, I use an a uh, you know laser tr transit. Okay. Okay. Um, I should be able to handle it. Yeah. Do you are are you the guy that does it, or do you have people? No, I do it myself. Do. I do. I, I actually do it. Yeah. So I do. I own the company and we, you know, and I, obviously I sub out tons of stuff, but I do all the site work and sometimes I'll bring a kid with me, you know, if there's a lot of handwork, you know, and then I have a, I have a frame and crew. I've got roof and crews that work for me. I have three sets of carpenters that work for me, you know, so we do a lot of projects at okay. one time, but I do all the site work myself. Okay. When you are on a site, and, yep. you've got, and you've got a drawing, sure. and you start to put your machine moving dirt, and yep. you find out that what's in the ground isn't what's on the drawing. What do you do? Whether it's different soil, whether it's water, whatever, it's not the same. What do you sure. do? I usually call the engineer. I just went through this last week. We ran into ledge. So I get the engineer there, obviously, and then they, I mean, they're the brains behind the whole plan. So they have to make the final decision. So that's what I would do. I'd call the engineer that drew the plans. Cause if, unless I, unless I do the perk test myself, which I didn't on this job, I would already know kind of what was going on underneath. Well, in our case, we also want to have you call us. Sure. And not just the engineer, because when it's all down to this, the engineer yep. had a license to be able to make the drawing, and we yep. approved it, but you're the guy 
that's got the license to be putting it in the ground. Correct. And if what's doing that is if if you do something that isn't exactly what's on that drawing, if it's anything is not sure. what you're saying, you're the guy that we're going to be coming after because you're the only guy that's got the license to be putting that thing in the ground. So as, as we always tell people, when a project turns south mm -hmm. and there's trouble and somebody goes to court, you want the Board of Health coming up as your attorney's witness, not the person that's going after you. Okay. And the way you do that is by making sure that all of us are one team. Okay. No, I agree. I usually call the engineer, and I, I mean, this last case, the engineer obviously calls the Board of Health. Yeah. And then we all had a meeting at one time. So a Board of Health was obviously present on this meeting with the ledge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure so, if, you, if you know who they are, but, but the I agree. The other thing that we always... Saying. We always require, and this one I don't think is a fill system, but uh, we always do require on fill systems that that the Board of Health does a, a bottom inspection before you put fill also. But this, yeah, uh, this one I think, is, is all gravel. No, it's pretty sandy over there, but I usually call for a, ground, a bottom inspection. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you. If you don't want to come, that's fine. Well, we come. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll call you for sure for bottom inspection. I okay. think that's, Lee, standard, that's standard procedure usually for me. Yeah. Lee is the guy that you call. Lee it's like he's got experience, knows what to do, knows who to call. I'll keep you in yeah. the loop. Yeah, no issues. Okay. Then, Colleen, we're all in agreement. You can sign this one. Okay. Okay, have a good, good night, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, let's see who else. Our next person is not till seven forty-five. That's that's Dennis Doucette. I'm online now. If you want to talk, you got time. We can get you done with quickly, Dennis. I've got a question on this. Uh, when sure. is how is it? How, how, how are you guys tonight? How's everybody doing? I'm doing okay. How about Lee good. and Herb and Colleen? Great. Doing good. Oh, so, Dennis, when yes, you, sir. you probably know, the governor just announced a whole bunch of different things that are ready to be happening in the next, uh, I think the first one is on the, the 11th, but the big one is on the uh, the 29th of May. When is this event due to go on? September 11th. Uh, he's cool. You're, the governor said today, if things go the way he wants them to go, we're going to be back into pretty normal operation by the 1st of August. I don't know that that's going to happen, but... Uh, <clears throat> I just Certainly. read that article about an hour ago, and they did a happy dance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lee, what is your thought? Um, I agree with going forward plans, um, but um, not to be the naysayer, but Dennis, you, uh, I'm sure you know, but I'll just mention it again, that if things turn south, um, we're all turning south with you at the same time. In the unlikely event, but possible that this train from India or some other fool thing comes up to get us, um, we need to be prepared to uh, err in the side of caution. And I'm sure that's in your thought process as well. Absolutely. I've, uh, I've thought about this long and hard uh, that if I get the board's approval tonight to pursue it and something happens, before August 1st, uh, I can uh, cancel the whole event. Uh, Dennis, just for your information, 
uh, we have pterodactyls in our backyard. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to have them uh, come down and have a hot dog. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dennis, good luck. So I have the um, approval to pursue it? Yeah, it Do looks it. like the... Go ahead, Herb. I, Do I it. really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Come the uh, probably middle of August, I will apply for a food permit so that we can get that all straightened out as well. Okay, whatever the whatever has to be done, we'll get it done. All right, I really appreciate this board's patience with me. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Bye-bye. May God smile upon you and your family. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now we do have our next appointment. I see Richard Sargent is with us. I am here. So we can we can take you early. All right. Thank you very much. How are you all doing today? We all said we're all well. Wonderful. We're, mar they we're uh marching in unison. Can't complain about that. Um, I, I sent some comments out, Richard. I, I, I did see those. Yes, sir. Um, and I think that all those are pretty doable. Let me just pull up, um, the comment. The big one that I saw was for every 10 feet, uh, of horizontal distance, there needs to be eight foot, eight inches, if I remember correctly. Sure. You have to go get your, your, uh, math two guy to do that for you and, uh, <laughs> or your geometry teacher, and he'll tell you, you take, uh, the hundred square, the ten squared is a hundred. Subtract mm -hmm. five squared, which is twenty-five, leaves you seventy-five. Take the square root of that, and there goes your eight feet, eight inches. You you just blew my mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah, a marching well, band guy, so I'm I'm good with that. But I haven't talked like that in a while. So. <laughs> Um, so I'm just looking at the, thank you, by the way, for the theaters and performance venues protocol summaries in that email. Uh, that was very helpful. Um, I had not seen that. I wasn't privy. That was a thing. So thank you. And, um, with the governor's new ordinance on outdoor masking, um, would we need to worry about masks if the performances on June 14th. June 14th. My, my thing that I looked at is the governor has also said about crowds, but the, the one about the, the masks, certainly it said you have to be within, uh, be careful. Because mm -hmm. it says about groups and events, but for sure, the horn part is its own thing about Correct. the 10-foot spacing. But, Herb, I don't know, Lee, how, since we just saw that this week. Yeah, I, I, I think this is so fluid, it is tough to make. Uh, dictums about any of it, and especially when you read the new stuff from MIT, that it doesn't make any difference whether you're six feet or 60 feet if you're talking indoors. Obviously, this isn't indoors, but the, the point being that these aerosolized particles can go a long way. So I think what Dick was emphasizing earlier everybody's just got to be careful got to mm -hmm. be careful uh, and the horn players it'd be nice if there's some way to stagger them uh, um, move them farther apart uh, i i don't know what the issue is and there's not going to be any science to it uh, but i uh, i think you just want to be as careful as you can be you don't want somebody blowing their trombone into someone else's ear. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, exactly. 
Okay, so in the um, proposal that I sent you, I kind of sent like a, a model where each of the vertical rows are 10 feet side to side and 10 feet back. And then the rows in between are offset by five feet in between. So and then that's those what offset. Doesn't fit. That doesn't well, fit. Okay. So when you draw, if you do it to scale, you'll find out that's where my little eight foot, eight inches comes out. So if you, okay. drew, if you drew a 10 foot circle, a 10 foot radius, a 20 foot circle, and says you've got to keep people out of that 10 foot radius. That's how you end up having to spread those rows out. Okay. Now that we're talking circles, that makes a lot more sense. Um, I'm sure you can find a math teacher that would, in school, that would be more than happy to do that for you. Oh, I know the right one for that. And and all in order you to need is a, a ten foot piece of string and a couple of pencils, and uh, you can place people. Got it. And um, so the big the biggest uh, mitigating factor I feel like we're we have with this is utilizing an FM transmitter to broadcast it live low low power transmitter and right. um that way everybody can stay in their car and the only reason why they would have to go out is for uh the toilet at the field yeah so the the issues there if you look at the regulations you've got stuff to work with that lets your audience be a lot closer it just says that the front row has to be 25 feet or more from the nearest person on the 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 band person mm -hmm. and you actually can spread out people if you want them in chairs and spread out you can work with it they don't have to be in the, the cars anymore and the other is the to deal with the the toilets the, the school has a protocol for toilets at events and what has to be done to to keep them safe you just have to make sure you follow that protocol and, and let people know what it is. Yep, that would definitely be in the program. All right, so. Lee and Herb, what are your thoughts? The world is starting to come back toward normal. And that's good. That's my thought. Yeah. Tell you what's really, really nice is you watch that daily number for deaths um, for the state. And that that baby is down, is it's down now to about as low as it got in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, but just as I was saying earlier fluid other things uh, all this is fluid right now yeah. you hope the trend stays that way but we don't have any assurance of that so we all have to be careful we all have to hope for the best on this uh, but there's there's not much in the way of any hard information about the number of feet and inches uh, inside or outside uh, we know that if you stay farther away you probably are safer but we don't really even know that so, so it looks like you're looks like you're you're set to go then according to the board of health you guys are awesome thank you very much we'll send you a personalized it's good to have the kids playing again Oh, it is wonderful. It is wonderful. Thank you, gentlemen. And I'll, like I said, I'll send you guys personal invitations to come on out. Fantastic. All right. Take care. Thank you. Okay. You too. Thank Good you. night. Well, our next one that we have is McCuffey. And I see Steve 
Griffin is on. Uh, Andrew's not here, but but uh, I don't know that that's Im important. My my issue here is again again a a bunch of uh, outdoor activities that were proposed. Uh, following it was very clear they're following all the, the guidelines. Uh, the the issue the one issue that I was I would well there I had a couple issues. But one, Andrew got back to me and I made a mistake and that I didn't realize that this was not a, a school year 2021-2022. So I, I made a bunch of comments about not making use of vaccinations and using it to their advantage. But there were, there were a couple things. One is I was concerned with the protocol that was around the dancing that was proposed on the, the first event. I, it's a spring something, I think. And Andrew got back to me and said they were not going to dance. They were going to withdraw that. Uh, there was another item, Steve, I don't know if you were ready to, to approach it. But Andrew had mentioned that that you guys were interested in now that that so much is really in front of us saying the disease isn't really spread on surfaces, it's spread in the air. And there were a bunch of high cost activities that Andrew wanted to know if we would be willing to back off on. And I told Andrew that that was your plan and you should come back and tell us what you want to do. All right. Uh, well, first, good evening, everybody. Uh, I, I do want to say that I am not in the position to be able to control spontaneous dancing, but certainly we will not set up a formal dance with a dance floor, you know, sometimes. People just got to dance, but uh, we will do our best to keep them separate. Yeah, I think I think the questions that are moving forward are around things like, um, you know, as as the state moves to open things up right now, our gym is rated on a 500 percent air handling capacity. When do you foresee that being back to regular gym capacity uh, for schools? Um, things like uh, dining hall capacity, uh, going back to using dishware rather than reusable things. Um, and of course, the, the conversation around whether surface cleaning works or just makes people feel good. Um, I guess we will go back, do our very best research and, uh, and put a proposal to you. If you have any guidance or thoughts for right now, we'd love to hear them. Um, but other than that, just... Uh, interested in your feedback on our, our latest plan. This is not fomite transmission. This is, in fact, an aerosolized transmission almost all of the time. So I think it was an abundance of caution from the CDC, from the state, from everyone involved when it wasn't clear all the modes of transmission of this agent. Um, so I think we're starting to understand that it's not fomite. So I think we've been doing a lot of cleansing of our souls maybe, but uh, it hasn't probably made a lot of difference with respect to transmission of the virus. Uh, that's my opinion. I don't have hard data at my fingertips to say that. But that gets us back in, into the gym, into the, you know, how this thing is gonna go on indoor activities. And I, I don't think, I read it again with the governor's 
talking about and it it certainly seemed like the the, the steps of the the May 10th or May 11th May 29th August 1st but Stephen in, in terms of what the governor seemed to be saying he seemed to be saying his goal was to get us back to where we were on, on August 1st. But they're still talking about maybe masks being required for events even at August 1st. So, so. That's indoors, not indoors. Yeah. Indoors. Yeah, uh, I think I think my questions are around uh, your thoughts on on occupancy, right? So if if the state if if, if the governor is saying we're going from ten percent to twenty percent to a hundred percent indoor occupancy at an arena that holds eighteen thousand people, will our school gym still have its side doors open, blowers on, and only twenty five people in it, um, or will that capacity be? re-rated is that something we would need a new engineering opinion on or are you going to weigh in based on the governor's mandate i'm sure you're going to say make me a report <laughs> make me a proposal but again looking for some guidance on that i my sense of this steve is to be conservative a bit longer uh, it's all loosening up. Everyone is starting to feel more comfortable. It's only going to take a couple of really nasty incidents, though, so, to make everyone very uncomfortable again. I would suggest we be conservative a bit longer. Uh, listen to the governor, listen to the CDC. Um, get ready to open things back up, but but I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy doing it right now. If it's Steve, if it if it helps, and I and I'm going to say reinforce what Herb just said. There is absolutely no talk about turning the blowers and filters off in either of the schools in town yeah so that that they're dealing with the same five air changes and there there absolutely is zero talk about that at this point well that's uh that's certainly helpful and again we weren't talking about right now we were talking about getting uh, ramping up and planning for the fall. Well, I would certainly do that. I would do. I I would ramp up, plan for it, expect it, and maybe it's going to happen. But I would certainly be positive about it. Especially when you when you look at at. I think we're going to have lots of vaccine available. My gut is by the a gut is the end of summer we're going to see twelve year olds get get authorized for this. So you could end up with a school that has mostly mostly vaccinated kids. Absolutely. So I think again with us, I, I know that we had put in in our latest uh, proposal, our latest plan, um, plans for summer camps. And uh, so we will probably come back to you between now and then just with a proposal around surface cleaning for summer, uh, just to kind of reduce it uh, for the summer and then probably right eliminate it for the fall that's one uh one plan and then um 
I see Andrew has hopped on. My question to him is whether we're looking at uh, dining, either dining capacity changes or reintroducing the dishware in dining uh, at the summer level or, or waiting till fall. Um, so actually, no, neither at this time. So our dining plan will continue as stated, and we always do disposables for the summer program anyway. Okay. Sounds like a plan to me. It's a fall thing. Yeah. So then the, yep. the question is, if you have any comments about what we put in front of you for, for now, or additional questions. My feeling was that, that everything that you that you presented, other than where I was concerned with the dancing, which you dealt with, is you were complying with the the current regulations. And and this board, the, the Herb Lee and I have been saying at least for the last month, comply with the current regulations. Is that correct, Herb and Lee? Yes. Yes. So what we're not we're we're not doing more than that to you. So what you said complies with that and our answer fits with what we've been consistently giving. But with respect to dancing, I would love to see whirling dervishes. So if you can get whirling dervishes, I will attend. <laughs> you're, you're not talking about the Canadian indie rock band, I'm assuming. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are we set with these gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Yes, Good thank night. you. Thanks for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Our next one, I see Daisy is here. So we can, Daisy, how are you? We're running a little bit early. I am. I didn't know how the process went. So I, I signed in early in case you guys were ahead of schedule. It happens that we are. And so we don't always do that, but we're happy to do it. Okay. So, so you have a request from us. Yes, uh, I'm here tonight. I want to thank you for, for fitting us in. I'm here representing the Granby Preservation Society. Um, last year with COVID, we lost a lot of our fundraising opportunities. Um, all throughout the year, we have people who donate uh, amounts of goods to be sold at our annual tag sale. Uh, this year, unlike any other year, we have a lot of stuff to sell and it's a major fundraiser. I did get my permit already for Memorial Day weekend, and I know that you guys have have it, had it marked for outdoor only, but I was hoping that you guys would allow us to have it inside of our garage bay. We have a couple of the large bays in the old highway garage that we have set up for the tag sale. I sent Colleen a copy of a drawing of the foot traffic um, for routing people in, we have the big windows in the back and we can set up some fans to pull the air through in one direction. Um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to look at the drawing and, and you know, hand sanitizer, masks and, or uh, gloves before people come in. Um, only one direction, once they come outside into the fresh air, then people can pay. Um, you have, a tight, you have a tight doorway in there where you've got people going both directions through it. But yeah. how do you fit when you look at it compared to what you're allowed for indoor activities? How do your, how do your numbers look? Well, I think right now we would be allowed like 10 people indoors for a, a, a meeting. Um, we can control the number of people who are going in and out. We would like to post a volunteer in each section. So there'd be two volunteers on the inside to prevent somebody from stopping, say in a doorway, you know, to keep people from congregating close to each other. Um, so 
if we limit it, we could limit it to maybe two sets of people in at a time, which would probably be four, six, you know, eight. We could definitely limit it to the 10 people at a time. These spaces uh, are huge. Yes, sir. Uh, those old garage spaces are enormous. Correct. So how do you think your plan compares to the big Y or to stop and shop? Well, I tried to use the, we tried to use the model of like big Y where they have the arrows on the floor and you keep people all moving into one direction. Mm -hmm. um, the ceilings, at least in the front where the big bay door is, will be open, that ceiling has got to be at least 16 feet high. It does slope down a little bit towards the back. But between the different bays, the ceilings are open. So the air actually isn't just entrapped in one bay. It actually flows out over three or four bays in that particular section. Yeah. There's another, there's another protocol for opening areas like this where, the, where occupancy isn't defined. And the, okay. The state has got a protocol that, and it says in the event that you do not have a, a square footage, if you know your square footage, but you don't have an assigned capacity. And yes. they, were, they were using a person per hundred square feet. Okay. So if, if you look, that curve, that goes after, you know, the point that you're making. Yeah. That says, look at your square footage. Yeah. And multiply it out and divide it by 100. And that okay. tells you how many people could be in that space. According okay. According to the new state standard. Okay. And I've got a uh, feeling, I think it's going to come out way more than, than you think. Okay. These are huge spaces, Dick. Right. Huge. And you had the dimensions on them. On yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, thir one section is 24 by 31, and the other section is 58 by yeah, so 19 and a half. By, by 31 is whatever, 900 square feet. So that one alone, you could end up with, with nine people in. I mean, okay. is that right? 9,000 square feet. No, I think 900. 900. I don't have my calculator oh, on me. Oh, yeah. No, 900. That's <laughs> Hundreds, not, not thousands. Yeah, not yeah. thousands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so that that starts to give you a lot more to work with. Okay. I mean, we'll, you know, we, the what last year when we did it, we did try to have it outside. Um, but a lot of our helpers are older in age and being moving stuff in and out. It was, a, you know, we had a really hard time with it. And we want to just be able to set everything up. And when we're done, shut the doors and it's ready to go for the next one in the fall. Um, you know, we, we made sure people had masks, hand sanitizer. We actually had some people that turned away because we wouldn't allow them, we wouldn't allow them to look over the stuff without having a mask on and using hand sanitizer. Hmm. Very appropriate. So we we want to protect all of our volunteers, everybody who comes. That's very important to us. You know, you can really protect them. Make sure that they get vaccinated. Absolutely. I go for my second shot on the third. Great. <laughs> Great. We're not, as a, as a town, we're not doing what we need to do yet. We're lower than the state average. And this last week, we, we felt we fell even more short. So uh, we were about 16% below the state average for per capita shots last for week. For vaccines. So, yeah, so that's not good. Yeah, I've got a 15 and a half year old and I'm really hoping that they open it up for the the 12 to 16 year olds because as soon as they do I uh, make an appointment for him he's the last one in the family to be able to get his shot great great make sure your workers are that's how you can really protect them 
I think that I think most all of them are. They've already received at least two doses. They're Good. both their doses. So uh, Lee and Herb, are we in pretty good shape here for for helping Daisy out? I hope absolutely. you feel like we're helping you out, Daisy. I, absolutely. I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to meet with me tonight about this. So, okay then. Yes. Then have a good night, Daisy. Awesome. Thanks thank thank some you of so them much. Them. Thank you, gentlemen. You in in Colleen. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Going back to our list, we've got. Uh, we still didn't do the well permit for lot two, Amherst Street, which is the same. That's the same that we we're just talking about with Daniel Strum. That's the same lot. Are we okay with that? We had a, a drawing that was, that's a pretty new system that was submitted. Um, do we have any issues with that one? Um, no, he seemed competent. Yeah, and this one is for the well part of it, but, but uh, I'm just looking, it was, we had a two page application that basically it was the, the drawing of the septic system with the well on it. In fact, that one, we spent a long time to, trying to get it because it was stepping on the, the next lot. And so there were two engineers, two different engineers, but they worked together to get that done. Mm -hmm. Lee, do you have a problem with that application? No, I didn't, uh, for whatever reason, I didn't come across that print. Is that off of the, uh, is that the piece off the Kizia property? No, this one is uh, along, if I am correct, this one is, if you're going, I'll call it north on Amherst, on Amherst Street, and you cross Aldrich Lake, as soon as you oh, come up, it's right that property side. on the right side. And this one I think is the second lot in. I know the, I know where you are. Okay, okay. So. Yeah, there's nothing out there. No, no. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. It's a pretty straightforward application. You haven't gone out there yet, but we haven't grabbed the, the application yet. Herb, are you okay with that one? Yes. And I am too. Lee, you are all set? Yes, thank you. Okay, so that's that. You can sign that one. Colleen, okay. we've got, if we move down into our, our next one, uh, just a report back. I was supposed to get to Gary Brome at, in Belgiatown about the shooting range. I did not do that. I'll have to get that done this week. We've okay. got uh, an issue. There's an, a letter that or an email, something came in about Cindy's in the Corvettes. But I was going to send the thing back to Colleen. It, it looks to me it's the same answer for all of these things. And Herb, I saw a note on the concerts that you sent out. And it looks to me like all of these is they have to comply with the, the regulations. Exactly. And as long as they do yeah. that, I don't have a problem. Uh, is that uh, what you're thinking too, Lee? That, that's correct, yes. Yeah, so it's just, they just have to comply. What I okay. what I don't especially love is, and I'm Lee and Herb and Colleen. I, mean, I don't know if you've read it, but a whole bunch of the stuff that the governor said, uh, oh, we're going to approve all of this. You can do this. You can do that. You can do everything, except you have to send a safety plan to the local boards of health. It doesn't have to. <laughs> oh, I saw that. <laughs> yes, I saw that as well, and. Uh, 
I said, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't say it has to be a good safety plan. It just said a safety plan. <laughs> right. So, so that's, that's a fine thing. So that's your answer for both of those. Um, what else do we do we have? I, I guess we're just going to have to look at these vaccinations to see if if we fall short and whether we have to do anything to try to encourage people to get vaccinated. So um, here's a here's a question that we just talked about a little bit with Daisy about her volunteers being vaccinated. Um, not to be, you know, down the wrong path, but should we be, or can we, or should we, or not even discuss that if you're not vaccinated, then you should not be, um, you know, on the inside as a volunteer, or was that going past our range? I don't know, but you can put it. You can put it on the same peak of saying when the Council on Aging wants to hold one of their sessions inside the building. Can they, in fact, have a? And, and Herb, I saw a comment that you said now that that uh, let's say they for their membership. If they have a list that people have showed that they were vaccinated and they're all in that room, you now have a room full of people that are vaccinated. And I don't see why you have to behave the same as if you have, or on a, on a bus going someplace, that if you've got all vaccinated people, then that's a whole different world than, than we are with not knowing. Well, that's, that's yeah. I, I don't want us to get into a jam of being, you know, um, we're not picking on anybody, but we're trying to instill upon the general public and the volunteer organizations of the world that um, lead by example. Well, lead. Do you ask everyone who comes into your pharmacy whether they've been vaccinated? Um, not on a regular basis, but I don't have any, uh, you know, because of all the plastic and so forth, I don't have any contact with anybody at this point. I mean, you know, verbal, but we're six or 10 feet away at all times. Are you giving vaccines at your pharmacy? I am currently not. Uh, you've got a lot of um, longtime residents of Granby who uh, trade with you, don't you? Yes. Might be a uh, a direct way to encourage people to get down to the CVS or to one of the other sites and get vaccinated. Well, in the early days of the program, uh, I wasn't even um, on the conversation list with the state of obtaining it. They were looking at these large uh, corporations to do this type of work. Right. Uh, I'm just talking about encouraging our Granby residents to go and get vaccinated since you directly interact with the public every day. Oh, yeah, we we uh, strongly support and encourage that type of behavior. And a matter of fact, we have um, taken several people, older people, and um, we have, through my wife, because she's better at this than I am, we have been actively uh, seeking appointments for some of our, of our elder citizens to find oh, them a spot and a time where they can get this thing done. 
Alberto, do you have any sense of the proportion of people who trade with you who have not been vaccinated? Um, no, it's probably, I would guess, probably in the 20, 30 percentile. Um, the older population is uh, proactive. The 30-ish and younger group is a tough crowd to convince otherwise. I, I'm just bringing it up as a potential interaction with our local public. Uh, Dick was saying earlier, he's ruining the fact that our vaccination numbers are low. This is a way to directly interact uh, with a respected person in the community who would be suggesting that they get vaccinated. Yes. Uh Practically with every, um, after we interact with a medication or recommendation, uh, the conversation goes to the availability because some people still come in without masks, we give them masks. And then we have the conversation of uh, whether or not they have the opportunity to schedule themselves a vaccine and whether or not they need some help um, booking themselves into to some of the various sites in the valley. So we are we are trying to keep everybody in the loop. There's a fair block, especially some of the younger girls who are misinformed but scared because of the uh, that incident with the uh, uh, the Johnson and Johnson. Not many, but enough to, you know, it's probably a good 10, 12 that are uh, shying away from it because they believe for misinformation that um, Pfizer or Moderna has got something in the closet that they just haven't revealed yet. Hmm. So you're saying Granby is a hotbed of conspiracies? <laughs> Depending on the day. Mm -hmm. But it is interesting that, you know, like when you were going and, and questioning what's happening in the store, Herb, it's interesting that, that in that environment, you're forced to just assume everybody's not vaccinated. So everybody's got to behave in the safest way. It's very interesting if you look at the council on aging and say, if you can certify that or somehow know that the people in the room are all vaccinated, why can't they behave in a different way than if you didn't know that they were vaccinated or not? And, it, and at some point, maybe we're going to get to that, but it, it certainly would be another way to make people think about if they were reluctant to get vaccinated, to be able to sit in the room the way they used to playing bingo because they're all safe is, is a reason for letting, for having people go get vaccinated. So I'm not yeah. sure it's the Board of Health's job to, to do that, but maybe Maybe it is the board of health job to promote things, just as you just said, Herb. Anything that we can do to promote someone getting vaccinated is is in keeping with, I think, with our role. Well, neither you nor I interact with the public. No. Lee I just interact and with guys on tacos. And believe it or not, I'm getting to be a persona non grata around those guys because every guy I see them I ask if they're done yet yeah uh, but Lee is an active participant with uh, with the public and respected pharmacists are referred to as doc so yes. they are respected by the public and if the doc tells them to go get vaccinated, they're more likely to take that advice 
than if it comes across the tube or they see it in the newspaper. Yeah. Well, maybe we're only a few weeks away from Lee being able to get some of this stuff too. Correct. But I mean, we still have every day, we still have the conversation to, because I, I've got a bunch of people in my head that I have been gently prodding over the last several weeks and several months. And we're making some, some inroads, thankfully, with a lot of people. Uh, there's, a, there's a group, um, and not to speak out of line, whether it's a social economic situation, I, don't, I really don't get it, uh, but they're extremely reluctant, um, despite, you know, um, the good news of how beneficial it can be. Um, there's a there's a large block which just just is uh, unsure, misinformed, scared. I I don't get it. It's not going to cost them a dime to do it. It's just going to be a win win. But um, maybe it's a side effect profile that they're afraid of. I don't understand it. I bet there are. <laughs> 570,000 people that would have liked to have been able to get vaccinated. Sure. So, okay. Then uh, are we at the point, Colleen, this is your point well, of the meeting that <laughs> says right. we're ready to Don't go. Run away. Well, we've got the title. Title V inspection report here, and then there were a couple things on the discussion that you guys wanted. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, on the, oh yeah, Title V, 87 Ferry Hill Road. Yeah, that was uh, a pass. That was, we're yeah, all set that, with that to receive that? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, yeah, we didn't get the finished discussion. Uh, one of the ones that that uh, outside review of septic system, I didn't get any follow up. Herb, the reason and you brought it up, the reason that I, I didn't push hard in the last two months is, well, there are two reasons, but one of them's minor, one of them's major. The minor one is there hasn't there haven't been many of them to review, which is the minor. That's not the that's not a good reason to do it. But the good reason was that I really thought that the answer, one of the things we would get with the shared services, was that it's someone to re, to review those for all of the systems and whatever our little group was, which seemed since I was having trouble getting a, a company to do it, if we did have someone that was capable of doing it and trained and working full time. Uh, your audio has frozen, Dick. Oh, oh really? Now it's okay. Um, okay. What I said is, I don't know how much you heard. Yeah, mine is saying, telling me it's, it's unstable. But uh, what I said is that there were, there were two reasons. One- Yeah, that, I, I heard those, okay. But the shared service was the big one that I thought would be very appropriate. Well, my only response to that is uh, I made a concerted effort and it went nowhere. Yeah. My only, my hope is that, that it should be more than a hope, but, but to start and open the door right away with Sharon and say that if you wanted to, you said you would be interested Let's go that and let's see if we can get someone else, but at least get one person 
and let's move it and get get it working. Well, there's at least a physician who's running for the Board of Health in South Hadley. Uh, perhaps they'll get elected. Perhaps uh, they might be more responsive to this than Sharon Hart has been. Well, My sense that she was very unresponsive and we had done all the work. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not pleased with that. Of course, I've said that before, so I'm not going to reiterate that. Uh, Colleen, I will ask, did you get uh, that draft copy to include with the minutes? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, is it appropriate to, well, I don't want to put anyone on the spot necessarily, but is it appropriate to invite Sharon to our next meeting? Or would that not be appropriate to, why not? you know? What, well, why I'm just, not do you know, that? I just, I, you know, this is important. Um, her put a lot of work into this thing. It's, it's something that's coming and we need to embrace it. Um, whether it's Sharon or, uh, you were in touch with Sharon, was it Emma Dragon as well, Herb? Uh, yes, I, I also uh, was in contact with Emma. Uh, yep. Emma wanted to uh, proceed in a different direction, uh, but she was responsive, uh, but wanted to uh, look at her community vaccination program and expand the community vaccination program. And that wasn't something that we were talking about in shared services. Right. I mean, I don't understand it. Are these guys, and you know, forgive me for being out of line here, but are these guys worried about their jobs in the future or something? I don't, I don't get it. Well, go ahead. Uh, I, I don't know the answer, Lee. Um, and obviously, to make a grant application takes work. It takes people committed to it. It means you have to do your part. It means you have to get buy-in from the people who are uh, your superiors. All that is time and okay. So okay. my sense is that things were wrapped around that. No commitment. Okay. My my sense, and it wasn't it wasn't just a sense. It was a, it was a strong feeling that Sharon would in fact be willing to entertain doing this, and. I certainly could support having Colleen uh, give us, have Sharon talk to us for 15 minutes at our next meeting and, and just see where we're going and, and, and find out if it's something that, that you know, South Hadley is the natural place, if it could work, to have one there and then I know Sharon had said she had done some work in with Hadley. So maybe this is maybe we start with with two and then grow to, to go further. But but I think Herb's got it right on that you the the first thing before you move forward, we Herb did the application because of the timing, but you certainly to have it go any place requires a commitment. You know, not a commitment by you, Herb. You, you were committed, but by commitment to our other partners or by our other partners. Well, I, I'm just um, wondering what it's going to be like uh, when these grants are let and uh, the um, People in governance in our town are going to ask us, why, why didn't you do this? Uh, 
there was $300,000 on the table. Uh, you didn't think that was real money? Why didn't you apply for this? So I suspect that we'll hear that at some point. Which is exactly well, yeah, but... the reason that I wanted the draft copy appended to our minutes. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, 100% um, in your corner on this thing that you did the work, you showed the effort, um, the, the, the lack of <clears throat> continuity did not come from your desk, it came from uh, the surrounding communities, clearly. I, 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 I have no uh, issue with uh, writing that draft. The issue was we had an opportunity to do something better for the people in our community and surrounding communities. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the people in our communities who are not going to get the benefit of the potential benefit of that shared services support. That's what's a bit galling. It has nothing to do with me. I can turn out copy quickly. You all know that. Uh, it's not a personal thing. It is a population thing, as we talked about before. We're trying to improve the health and welfare of the people in our community and our surrounding communities. And this was co-offered state support, almost guaranteed to do it. Almost guaranteed. Herb, would you be opposed to getting Sharon to, to spend 15 minutes with us at our next meeting? I, I wouldn't be opposed. Uh, what is she going to do? Is she going to listen to our proposal? No. Uh, that That's not going to be useful. Oh, I think it's, I would think it would be to explore, explore joining the, the what you we could certainly use your draft of saying essentially your draft really said let's share the whole services let's get the stuff we need and share and and uh, quite frankly at this point we don't have much to offer we don't have any people besides Colleen but but at least see if Sharon is is willing to start to put something together. But, but she may say, one of the things that she said to me is that, you know, we already have a full staff. We already have plenty of people. If that's, if that's the case, if, the, if you really believe, if she really believes that there's nothing in, her, in it for her community, then she's not a good partner. So she has epidemiology and no, data. No, she management. doesn't. Well, of course, <laughs> of course, of course she course. doesn't. Well, and and so to Lee's question, uh, it's not clear to me how useful it's going to be to talk to Sharon if she doesn't understand the benefit of having experts in data management. Uh, what are we going to talk about? I think what we he has every. Herb, I would offer that we would try to to share with her your insight, yours, because it's a good one, and that and that ultimately, if if we can at least get someone talking about moving forward. Maybe we now go and say, you know, Emma, now that your inoculation program is is working, are you willing to to look at a bigger 
a bigger picture. Because yours was a yours was a great vision. It was a big vision, Herb. And it's it's the correct vision, I think. Well, um, why don't you explore that with her, Dick? Oh. I, and I, but to, uh, I really don't think it would be useful to have an argument with uh, no, no, we've got no. this or we've got that already, and or this is going to offset the monies that we're already paying. That's not what these monies are for. There's no offset in this support. No, no, it's the, so it's this, the game. This comes up every 12 months, correct? Um, I'm not sure, uh, Lee, when the next uh, request for proposals, but it, it may be, uh, it may come up again. It is interesting when I contacted the state to ask them, ask the, the person who essentially ran the Zoom program, whether they would consider two versus three uh, towns. I never received any reply from her. Uh, absolutely mute. Uh, so there was silence. Interesting. I can try again. I can try. Well, I'm, again. Just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that if we, well, we're not going to get Sharon or Emma or anyone else to, in two weeks from now, um, join the team um, with banners waving. Uh, we can certainly. Um, by planting the seed uh, and revisit the topic periodically in the hopes that maybe, you know, three to six months from now, uh, we'll have some growth on the idea. And maybe by that time with fall approaching uh, and depending on what shape the state and country is in, we may be looking at a potential um, reapplication on the grant and maybe by that time we'll have some uh support from our neighbors i, 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 I can you know. support herb your your thought of having a one-on-one -on -one with sharon with me i can support that that's worthwhile that, that we could at least find out what kind of roadblocks we're faced with or I can, I can get us more information than we have right now. Yes. Why was she, uh, and the she is South Hadley, why was she so reticent to proceed? I think that would be important to find out, Dick. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because it's, yeah. Let me, let me spend... I'll spend a half an hour with her and let's let's see what we can move forward with it. At least it's it's better if we have some structure and know what we're we're doing, it'll be a much better use of our time too. Uh, did we uh, yes, thank you. Uh, did we pass by the outside review of the septic system? You said there were a couple of things, but um, I still think that we ought to be seriously considering that. Uh, and I, I won't speak for Lee, who's got decades of experience here, but I will speak for me. Uh, I could not do an adequate job on these reviews. So this would be assuming, Chairman Bombardier, that you were not available. Uh, I could not do an adequate job. Uh, maybe Lee can, uh, and maybe we don't need any outside group to help with these reviews, but Man, uh, just uh, um, 
everything is is so squirrely in this life uh, to have backup for these things uh, I think makes sense I think you need I support absolutely what you're saying um, and it's where I'm coming from is if we're going to, and my I, my true belief is we are going to end up with shared services and i just don't know that in the short term is it worth going to get somebody another a company started if we know in fact that the shared services is going to take care of it within a year if it's not and i guess realistically it may not be and and we need a short term solution and a long term solution and maybe it's maybe it's just to to do a contract some contract work with somebody that says even if this goes on for a year or two years we at least have that backup Correct. And the people making the application uh, are going to have to support that endeavor. Yeah. And it sounds like that's what's done in surrounding towns. So it's not as if this is some unique burden that Granby would be putting on engineers uh, and homeowners. Um, so uh, it's still my sense that it ought to be explored. Okay, then let me find another engineering house other than Pine and Bond. And uh, let's see if we can I can find another one that's willing to just do a give us a contract price for doing these things and it goes as long as it goes. And it, and I guess it's possible that even on a shared service thing, maybe we maybe that's one that we contract out anyways. Correct. Uh, if if this pandemic hadn't happened and I've been able to understand perk tests and deep holes and fill and soil and water levels and all this stuff, uh, maybe I wouldn't have this sense about it. But I don't understand those things. Uh, and maybe Lee can take over if you're not doing it. But I don't think that's a good solution either. I don't think we ought to be doing it. No, I agree with you. We're, I agree that, that let's not, let's face it. We, we've got three pretty old men here, and that shouldn't be what what the town depends on. Um, no country for old men. That's right. Um, Correct. Uh, can I bring up another? So you're going to pursue that. Good. Can I'm I bring up another it. thing? I, and I, I think I wrote something somewhere uh, that multi, multi page Andrew Parker uh, missive. I, I just got tired of it. I will tell you straight out. And I wasn't going to review the whole thing. And my suggestion is when we get these dozen plus page applications that we divide them up and review a part of them so that not one of us needs to spend a couple of hours because that's what it would have taken me to carefully review every bit of what Parker wrote. So I think that is not what I want to do on the Board of Health. And I don't think that's a good use of the board members' time to spend hours reviewing these things so i think we ought to divide up 
the work. I agree that I don't know how we'll divide it. Maybe we just do it by page. Because what's happening is that none of us ends up giving it the, the time that's needed the way it is now. And so we end up with three people giving various degrees of work, none of which is sufficient to review it properly. Well, I think I think the single person spending hours is unreasonable. I agree with you. The three blind men feeling parts of the elephant are not going to come up with a good idea of what an elephant is. But it can be discussed afterward, the, the various sections and a consensus reached about it. And I think that that makes more sense to me. So I would suggest we think about that for long applications to the board. Probably for the, for the again, for the short term, because in, in reality, if we had shared services, hopefully we would have somebody that we were paying for that could spend 20 hours on it if needed. But that's not going to help us three months from now. Yeah. So do we want to just blindly the next, I don't, I don't mean blindly, but the next one of these that comes in, just, I don't care, any one of us, take a shot at saying here's the logical place to cut it in thirds and pass it out. Sure. That's fine with me. Okay. I'm happy to do my part. I am unhappy about being asked to do an unreasonable amount of review uh, that is potentially important. And I'm going to miss it yeah. because I'm going to skip over the stuff. Yeah. Okay, let's give it a shot. And if we all, when we see one coming in that we think fits in it, let's whoever sees it and says, this looks like one, then let's, you know, raise our hand and say, this is one. So we catch it. Yep. Good. I see 84 Harris Street on here. I know the chief was on for a while. I don't know whether he's on anymore. Uh, I did not go out uh, and review 84 Harris Street, but from what I've heard and what I think the rest of us have heard, it's a disaster out there. Oh. Is everything frozen, Colleen? I think so. I don't yeah. see Dick anymore. And well, I see him, but he is frozen, and now he's gone. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, any rate, uh, Colleen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we we can say sayonara. That's right. <laughs> I think so. That's it. All right. <laughs> I don't know who's on the, the phone lines, but. Um, uh, well, one of the phones is mine because sometimes mine freezes, but if I have my phone on, I don't miss anything. Got and it. And the other one is Lee. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So this is the. <laughs> okay. This, this is the event we were talking about earlier where. Um, if one of us is unable to attend the meeting and throw their expertise in, then it falls on the two remaining shoulders. So mm -hmm. um, that being said, I would uh, respectfully submit that we uh, adjourn the meeting. And I would second that. And uh, if okay. we both vote aye, uh, let's go have a libation. Absolutely. Okay. Good night. Okay. Good, Good night, night, folks. Ali. Thank you. Oh, bye -bye.